Okay. Um, you see, now I'm going to show you how Omicron contract moves. This is the third in the series, right? We've done alpha contracts, epsilon contracts, and now Omicron contracts. This is this is the oldest, actually, of the three classes. Okay, and um, you know that it makes you, you think it would be the oldest because it, there are so many adjectives and nouns that end in os in Greek of the second function type, mm -hmm. and, and the way it is. Um, so, so the the uh, we can't simplify this in the way that we can simplify the uh, the way contraction works for the alpha contracts and the epsilon contracts. Mm -hmm. um, but what we've done is boil down a whole set of uh, contraction rules uh, to these three that are on the blackboard. Um, and you can see how the, how they work. Um, and just look, look, let's go through the rules for a second, and you can understand the consequences of it. So when you have um, O plus E I, which is the ending of you know so many uh, so many uh, forms that you know, or an eta I or a subscript, or an OI, they're all going to become OI. Okay. So that means, for example, in, where you have luo, lues, lue in EIS and EI, you're going to have OIs there, okay, which looks like optatives. It's pretty disturbing, okay? Um, and notice that you're losing the contrast between the EI and the OI, okay, and the EI and the eta I of a subscript. Everything is becoming OI, so there are a lot of forms that look very similar, and, 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 it's, and it's tricky at first. Um, the Simpler ones, but notice a similar principle involved. When you combine an E or an O vowel, that is either of the thematic vowels, mm -hmm. you're going to get OU, mm -hmm. okay, which means you lose the distinction between the E and the O in these in these real forms. And the same goes for the subjunctive. You're going to get A or omega. At least it's not the same as the as the indicative forms. Okay, um, at least in part of the paradigm. We'll see how that works mm -hmm. out. But but you, you neutralize the contrast between eta subjunctives and omega subjunctives, and you're going to get the omega. So the O is a sound that dominates these forms in a way that the E's and the epsilons and the alphas do not, um, and it doesn't let through a lot of variation. And it helps you to understand what forms you're looking at in the verbs. Again, this is only in the imperfective uh, aspect system, the present, the imperfect forms. Um, of the indicative and the subjunctive and the optative. Everywhere else, um, the principal parts of these verbs are as regular as we've seen the principal parts of the two Motlin types and the Poyao types. Um, so we're not dealing with the future ones. So let's look at the indicative, but we see the indicative um, present, present indicative active of de lo. It's it, The forms that you see are de lo um, with a circumflex. Oops. <laughs> Yep. We'll look at the principal parts in a second. De lo, de lois. Okay. Again, this can be an optative too. Okay. We'll mm -hmm. show you in a second. And de loi. Okay. So that's because the ei is becoming an oi. Right. And in the plural, it's going to be de lumen. And then annoyingly consistent. De lumen. The circumflex over the ou. De lute. Circumflex over the ou. And de luce, de luce, rather, possible removable. Okay, um, again with the circumflex over the OU. So you've got, you've got the advantage of consistency in the plural, okay, but, the, but what's happened is that so many distinctions have collapsed that you can't tell whether de lois and de loi are actually optatives, right? Not only that, but the singular there is the same as the subjunctive, de lo, de lois, de loi. Remember, because in the rule that we gave you, whether it's an eta with an iota subscript or an, 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 an omicron iota, or an omega with a, um, you're going to get going to get oi. Okay, mm -hmm. so so you're going to get de lo, de lois, um, de loi in the subjunctive singular, and then the plural, you're going to see something different. Um, you're going to have de lo men. De lote and de lose. You might want to write them down there. Subjunctive and indicative are the same in the singular, but in the subjunctive plural, you get a distinction. Instead of de luna and de lute, de luce, you're going to have de lona and de omega, de lote, and de lose. 
Yep, yep, exactly. Whoops. By the way, this verb comes from an adjective, de loss, which has no English cognates and means clear or apparent. So the verb de la, which has become the standard verb, mm -hmm. that means to make something clear, to clarify something. Um, all right, so so that's that's one class of things. Let's look at the optative of these verbs. Okay, you can put it on, make a line, and do it on the same screen here. Um, the optative singular, it's going to be de loi me. Okay, in the first person, de lois, and de loi. Um, and then, and, and then the plural is going to be, you're going to have iota eight optatives, you can have de, de loye and de loye, de loye as well. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and then because of the contract that I've shown you both. Um, but in the plural, you're going to have de loy men, de loite, de loise, de loyan rather, sorry, um, in the third person plural. Um, so, so those forms are not in the plural, they're, they're distinctive. The first person singular form is distinctive, but the second person singular and the third person singular, the voice and the voice, can be second and third person indicative, uh, second and third person subjunctive, as well as second and third person operative. It is really yeah. collapsing categories. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we should also take a look at the at the imperfect uh, indicative forms and maybe a little little passive forms. Okay. Um, this this makes messes things up. Maybe we should move to a new page, and let's look at the let's say the middle passive uh, present indicative of de la. So there you're going to get de lumai in the first person singular. Um, that's that's not bad. De lumai, and what you get what, as the result of a whole set of contractions here is a horrible thing. De loy. That is de <laughs> Okay. Because you're going to get an eta iota subscript at the end of it, and, all right, and then you get it. That looks like a third person singular indicative, subjunctive, optative, as well as a second person singular middle and passive. Okay, and then you get then you have de lutai and so forth. It's de lumita, de lumita, de luta, de lusta, and de luntai. So that's not bad in the plural, but the second person singular form sucks. Mm -hmm. um, in in terms of uh, of the indicative. Um, uh, and, and, and the imperfect I wanted us to look at, it's it's a delum, and you can show it on the same, or another one's fine. So imperfect act, active indicative is going to be, you have your argument. So it's a de loon, or you have a circumflex, a de loose. Okay. A circumflex and a de loon. With an acute accent, whoops, those are wrong. That's not that not really have circumflexes, they all have an acute on the eight of my fault. A day and a day, right? okay. And then it's going to be a day and a day loose, a day loose, a day loose, and a day loose. But those forms have a circumflex over the OU, the first two, but the others do not. The third one does not, it's a day loose, like the first person second. Okay. Okay, so you can see that, that uh, again, just to sort of summarize, we, we neutralize the contrast between the E and the O vowels, between the Omicron um, and the Epsilon. So, so we've got one form in which, into which everything contracts in a case like this. Makes it simpler in some way, mm -hmm. but more difficult because we have so much overlap. We, I don't think this is a hard form to recognize, but others are going to be. All right, so, so let's talk about some other forms here. We, we talked about the optative. I think that's relatively straightforward. Um, the in, infinitive in the active is de loon, okay? No, no epsilon iota. You're going to have O-U-N, just consistent with T-man, um, which whoever did not have an iota subscript. Oops, we lost the light here. Darn, hold on, I'm going to put it on. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Um, in the in the participles, um, we got where you, again you have the O thematic vowel. The, the only tricky form is the nominative singular masculine, which is de lone with an omega. Um, 
and circumflex, and then de lusa, de lun, and, and then the um, generative singular of the masculine is de luntas, um, o u n t o s, and so forth. I think these are relatively simple. The middle participle is going to be de luminos, de lumene, de lumenon, o u and q on a u. And so forth. That's the middle part. So uh, um, I don't think there's a, you're going to run into a lot of problem with these with these forms, except for the book shows you what happens with the word with the word deloy, which can be seven different things, <laughs> and the form delois, which can be three. Okay, deloy is a nightmare because mm -hmm. of the second person singular the middle ending, so it's complicated. I think. So you have its inductive optimum middle as well as indicative middle. <laughs> All right, so so it's messy there, but I think you'll be able to handle it. All right, stop there.